Hello YouTube, it's Krosama. And here we're happy today is the High Grade Universal Century Sinanju Stein narrative version. Now this is a mobile suit that will be appearing in the anime movie uh, premiering I think at the end of this month. It should be like the 29th or something. Uh, but it is the Gundam narrative, uh, essentially like an OVA uh, movie. And this is going to be one of the kits or mobile suits that's going to be featured in the series itself. Now I'm super stoked about it. I'm hoping I can go ahead and see it on the, the release day. If not, then I'll definitely catch it uh, later on. But Ultimately, this suit looks just splendid. Um, absolutely phenomenal. I do love the original Sinanju Stein that came out in Massacre and Form. Uh, and this one, I, I mean, when it comes to high grades, this is like, these are really starting to become like the pinnacle of, of high grades in my opinion. Uh, this kit is, is just splendid. It's not on the status of maybe like the uh, the high grade Moon Gundam, uh, but it is on a pretty good level. Uh, definitely far surpasses a lot of the other UC kits that we've had in the past. Uh, so let's go ahead and just start taking a look at all the details, articulation, gimmicks, and everything else in between. Okay, so we're taking a look at the head sculpt. The head sculpt is really good overall. Nothing really too uh, crazy, but I, I think that this is just a little bit better than what I've seen most high grades head sculpts. Not like the you know most recent ones, uh, kind of like the Moon Gundam, but just in the past, seeing a lot of other UC kits getting released, this is by far one of the better head sculpts I've seen. Great details overall. Um, it's all brand new parts, so nothing that's going to be carried over from uh, the original Sinanju. And the only thing that is uh, carried over from that original Sinanju back in 2010 is going to be the hands. You got a part that's in the chest, uh, the waist, uh, basically the hip parts, and um, that's pretty much about it, and the weapon itself. But other than that, everything else is going to be all new sculpts. And the body is also a brand new sculpt. Uh, it has multi different colors that I really do like. The, the color separation on this thing is amazing. The only thing they really couldn't do, which I mean they could, but it would probably cost a lot more money, uh, is going to be the you know the emblems, the the crests and the sleeves. So this you're gonna have to use utilize a sticker. But since these parts are raised anyways, uh, it shouldn't be that hard for y'all to go ahead and just paint that white. Uh, you know, just seeing as this is already black. So if you don't want to paint the entire kit, but you do want to paint that white in there, that should not be any kind of issue for you. Uh, but for me, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, paint it black uh, and then go ahead and do like, a, I'm, I'm going to try and do a re uh, reverse wash if I can. Uh, if not, then I'll just go ahead and lay down some hand paint primer and then basically paint a couple of uh, shades of white right over it. But other than the color separation, uh, looks really good overall, and there is a gimmick that's built into the body itself. Uh, what really isn't too significant of one, but basically you can pull out the arm, like the uh, the shoulder joints, and it's going to give you a little bit more range of mobility, uh, which I you know I'll cover in the our overall articulation. But that is a pretty cool gimmick that you can go ahead and just slide that out. Uh, so I've seen a couple of kids that do utilize that kind of gimmick, but uh, it's really good to see that in the Universe Century line as well. So we're taking a look at the shoulder and arms. Lots of good panel lines, uh, different crevices and raised details. So uh, I can only imagine maybe painting separate different tones into, into the shoulders might actually look pretty good. Something I'm, I'm actually gonna uh, go ahead and consider. Uh, but yeah, the details look good. The sleeves look good. Uh, nothing really too crazy. The sleeves actually make up of three different parts. Um, and the one thing that kind of irks me is like, you see that little seam line right there. Yeah, it's a little annoying, but um, you know, it shouldn't really be too bad. I'm gonna try and like do the best I can with that. Uh, but I think once I paint over it, it shouldn't really show or look uh, any any you know terrible. The waist unit is pretty nice as well. Uh, I do love the front skirts. And I think they look pretty cool. Uh, you do have these little you know kind of vents right here. Uh, which I'm pretty sure they're thrusters, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that those are thrusters. Uh, but they look pretty cool. There's separate pieces that just pop right underneath that. But yeah, the waist is fine. And for once, I, I guess it's been a while, because I, I, I don't really see this on too many high grades, but the back skirts have their own individual articulation as well. So I love that. That's always pretty cool, because usually it's either a solid piece that doesn't move in, like at all, or it moves uh, together. Like you can't, um, you can't cut in half. So, looks really good, uh, really, really happy about that. And with the legs, the legs look good as well. Uh, the only gimmick that really carries over with this is that, um, you know, these can actually move. So, I mean, I don't know if it's much of a gimmick, but yeah, they, these little thrusters on the side of the legs can move. Uh, one missed opportunity, I think, that Bandai did is not affording the opportunity for the, uh, the front, like, the front skirt right here on the, uh, the ankle or on the leg. 
I wish this would uh, would have articulation. Like it just kind of seems like they could have cut this part out and then just have like a little um, dual like peg piece, and this can just come up and down. But I'm pretty sure for some of those expert builders out there, it should not be any kind of issue if you got to go ahead and customize it, uh, you know, to your liking. Uh, another kind of missed opportunity is I honestly thought this knee was going to separate right here just for the way it looks, but it does not. So there's no multi knee separation it just kind of like is uh two pieces slapped on top of each other but overall that's not really too bad and then the last thing we're going to take a look at as far as details is going to be the backpack uh backpack looks amazing very very beautiful love the fuel tanks right here on the uh the connection points on the backpack the thrusters the everything just looks good this has like a nice like smooth uh flow overall uh, one thing I'm gonna tell you is that cutting uh, the you know the blue off. So I went ahead and sanded this all the way down, uh, but the little like white underneath this still shows. So be careful. Uh, I would definitely use the technique of like painting that uh, and just kind of like sanding it down uh, after you go ahead and paint it, and just kind of like makes the blue blend in and kind of hides the white a little bit more. Uh, but since I'm painting this kit anyway, you know this is already very smooth, so I should not have any kind of uh, problems with uh, that white at all. Okay, so let's take a look at articulation. Head goes up and down, side to side, look left and right, shoulder comes out, individual joint on the shoulder, extra shoulder piece goes up and down, can go up about that far, back and forth, rotation right at the bicep, does have two points of articulation, so the first one goes about that far, and then the second one, that far, ball joint for the hand, ball joint for the waist, individual front skirts, side skirts are on little pegs, Individual back skirt, leg can move forward that much, sideways that much, backwards this much, rotation right below the hip, two parts of articulation, one right here, and then the second one about right there. Back thruster can move out just a little bit. Side thrusters are on a little peg, so it can just move all the way around. Rotation right above the ankle on the inside of that leg, uh, but it also has a ball joint that connects into the foot. So when you're moving it back and forth, you are going to have the accessibility of kind of enhancing it with that ball joint. So overall, not really too bad. You can go back and forth and rotate all the way around. There's a ball joint that connects into the thruster right here. So you are going to get a pretty decent range of movement. And then there's also a peg that connects into this side of the thruster and it's going to allow it to move up and down which is gonna be the same for both thrusters, and then the fuel tanks are on little ball joints. Now, as far as accessories, you are gonna get multiple hands. So the first set of hands is gonna be these nice little closed fists that don't have uh, like a, a slot to actually input any kind of accessories in. And next you will get these open hands that allow you to go ahead and put you know items such as uh, the beam sabers in those hands. Next hand would be a trigger hand. And the last hand is going to be this more kind of like uh, gripping looking hand. Uh, it's, it's, I would consider it essentially to hold the rifle, uh, you know, basically with both hands uh, instead of just the one. So it allows it to comfortably sit in that hand whenever you're doing some poses. Okay, so this is the first weapon for the Sinanju Stein that we're going to talk about. Uh, this is the high beam rifle. It looks really good overall. Uh, it is a pretty beefcake of a rifle, if I must say so myself. Uh, but one of the gimmicks about this thing is that it can actually load up different armaments uh, into well onto the weapon itself. So uh, if you're utilizing the you know beam the beam rifle and you kind of want to utilize uh, some more high firepower uh, or heavier firepower, you want to go ahead and start slapping on either the grenade launcher or the bazooka into the bottom slot right here underneath the rifle itself. So with the high beam rifle in hand, it looks really good. Uh, even without the other you know, armaments uh, connected underneath it, it is a pretty big rifle for a mobile suit. So uh, definitely satisfied with it, but let's go ahead and start taking a look at the other weapons, uh, such as the bazooka. Okay, and here is the bazooka. So it's in a nice little gray. Uh, overall, I think it looks fine. Uh, it has a couple of like points of articulation, which is just gonna be in the gripping handles. Uh, other than that, nothing really like slides in and out, but there is another um, kind of gimmick that can be used for this uh, bazooka, which is gonna be more of a condensed version that connects to the underside of the high beam rifle. Now, if you wanna go ahead and connect the bazooka, all you're gonna do is just let this piece down right here and then this is just going to snap right on the underside of it uh, pretty easy. I'm just kind of having trouble because I'm looking at it in such a, a weird angle. But yeah, they have a couple of pegs that you just kind of 
plug all that in and then you're gonna go ahead and connect that right back in and it's gonna make it a little bit more heavy so as you can see the hands start drooping down uh, but if you get into a nice position or even just tighten up the joints just a little bit you shouldn't have any kind of uh, issues or problems whatsoever so the next weapon we have is going to be the grenade launcher. Uh, the grenade launcher is a nice little attachment. Um, it doesn't really have a need to be like handled individually, uh, you know, by a hand. Uh, this is more something that you connect to an actual weapon. So this can connect to the underside of the high beam rifle, but it can also connect to the shield. But let's take a look at it connected to the rifle. So with the attachment, it doesn't really look too much different. It just has like. I don't know, a little bit more thickness to it, but uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. You know, you have the little grenades uh, that's going to be shooting out from underneath there. So I think it's a pretty cool weapon, but um, it's really up to you. If you, I, to me, I prefer the bazooka look. I think that just looks so much cool, uh, cooler than uh, the smaller little attachment. But uh, just kind of depending on how you want to view your kid, and if you want to kind of like set up any kind of scenarios that is going to utilize the grenade launcher instead, uh, then this is definitely a good attachment. Uh, next, let's go ahead and take a look at the shield and then this attachment onto the shield. Okay, and here is the shield. The shield looks really good. Um, no, like, no extra stickers are needed, uh, but you do get a nice little emblem sticker, and this is something I wanted to show y'all earlier is the entire sticker sheet. So, uh, obviously you have all the crest stuff right here, the things for the sleeves, uh, but this little Neo Zeon uh, symbol, this is actually going to go uh, right there on the top of it, but I decided to not utilize it at all. Uh, and then also you're going to have these uh, little stickers that's going to go on the fuel tanks, uh, but once again, not utilizing anything, I'm just going to go ahead and op out and paint it all myself. And the way you want to connect the shield, it's just basically snapping right in. So very, very nice uh, attachment overall. And then this is going to have its own little articulation. Uh, basically can swivel back and forth and move all around. Uh, but it cannot go into the front or in the back of the forearm. It can only stay right there. Now if you want to go ahead and connect the grenade launcher to the weapon, uh, basically just connect the peg right underneath here. So this is probably where I'm just going to keep mine at because I think it looks pretty decent and kind of just adds a little more uh, depth to the overall uh, shield. But yeah, if you want, just go ahead and connect it right onto the underside of that shield and it's going to look pretty good, uh, basically just shooting some grenades from the shield itself. Okay, and the last weapon we're going to take a look at is going to be the beam rifles. So the actual beam rifle hilt is stored right underneath uh, the forearm. So you just take it right out of there and you're going to slap this part back if I can get it. But you're going to slap this part right back there. Utilize the beam saber effect that comes with it. Plug it right into uh, the hilt. Plug it right into the hand. And here's the beam effect in full pose. Uh, looks pretty good overall, you do get two, so if you want to uh, you know, utilize the other beam effect and the other hilt, you could definitely go ahead and use them for both hands. Uh, if not, then I think one is gonna be plenty enough, especially with the other kind of like action hand on the, uh, the left hand side. So, looks pretty good. Uh, this might be kind of like my go-to pose. I might just have to get another stand. Uh, but yeah, I like it overall, and I think it's I think it's pretty cool. Uh, maybe a little bit better looking than uh, just having the beam rifle if you're going to go ahead and do some kind of action pose. Uh, that might be just me, but yeah, I think this looks pretty dope. So uh, if you love the melee type style as much, as just as much as I do, then this might be something you want to go ahead and utilize. Now there are some leftover pieces, so you're going to have some polycaps right here. Uh, you have just like a little part right there, which I don't really know what it goes to. A couple parts right here, and then you're going to have... Uh, some stuff right here as well which this is going to be the Sinanju from 2010 um, so it's going to have some of these little uh, parts right here which I'm pretty sure these are all the beam axes uh, that go on the underside of the shield and you got like the back skirt right there and uh, just some more parts I think this might be part for the shield if I'm not mistaken and don't really know exactly what that is but yeah you got some parts all inside here so I don't know if y'all want to use them definitely you can but uh, for me this is pretty much just going to be uh, probably like you know painting fodder uh, just kind of priming it up and, tr and trying out different uh, paint techniques and that's pretty much all I use these little parts for. Okay so before I wrap the review up let me go over a couple of the paints I'm going to use to actually paint this guy up. First is going to be flat white for all that ugly gray. Next for the darker gray I'm just going to use a light dull gray. Metallic super silver for all the thrusters. Light gun metal for all the weapons. Gun metal for the inner frame. Some copper, just in some small little detail locations. Blue for all the blue parts. Flat black for all the black parts. Red version anime color, which is basically going to be for like just small details around the kit. 
Now the light blue, I'm gonna try and do shading. So if I can get this accomplished, uh, basically I'm gonna go ahead and prime the kit and then I will spray uh, blue on the, uh, pretty much the edges and just give it like a, a little bit of a blue tint on those edges whenever I spray the, uh, the white right over it. And then lastly, fluorescent green is gonna be for the eyes as well as like the scope and everything on the weapons itself. And last time I'm gonna go ahead and use some of these uh, red water slide decals and I have some white ones as well. Uh, but I'll use these primarily going to be on the uh, the white and the gray parts, and then I'll use the white decals for the you know all the the blue and actually that's probably just going to be it. Just uh, the white will be all in the uh, the blue for the chest as well as the thrusters. Well, to start off with my final thoughts, overall the kit as a base, you know, without paint or anything, looks pretty damn good. Even with the colors kind of looking a little funky, I think overall. The color separation is really good, and if you really want that proper color, then you're gonna just gonna have to paint it yourself. But that that's a small con in my opinion. So now on to the pros. Well, for the pros, there's actually quite a bit. Um, the kit is one of the top, I would say top 10 uh, high grades I've built so far. It's it's so cool and at times I kind of feel as if it's like almost master grade quality but then you start looking at some of the small details and how like maybe the uh, the knee separation doesn't fully separate like you really want to uh, but yeah other than that um, the weapons the accessories that come with it truly truly amazing uh, the overall articulation the range of posability it has uh, just all of it just adds up to such a beautiful looking kit and it's really heavily uh, credited to the fact that it uses a lot of new mold it doesn't borrow too much of the old Sinanju so that is definitely one of the pros I have for this thing is that they went out of their way to make new mold when they could have did something much like the unicorn over here and just use pretty much the same exact mold they've been using for the past like eight years uh, so definitely kudos to them for doing something a little bit different and giving us a, a better unique experience when it comes to the Sinanju Stein uh, especially such a beloved mobile suit in the UC universe. So if you was to ask me if this kit is worth the yen price, I would say absolutely, but also kind of depending on your overall budget. Uh, this kit does come in at 2,600 yen, which I know to some people it may be a little bit pricey, but honestly to me, I think it's definitely worth the uh, the you know yen price tag that it's going to be coming with. Uh, pretty much the same price as a real grade, but I think it's a little bit better than some real grades in, in some retrospect. But that's it for me, guys. Definitely thank you for watching. It was a pleasure building this kit. A pleasure um, pretty much putting it together and reviewing it for y'all, posing it. Uh, but I definitely want to want y'all to go ahead and be a little bit excited to see the painted review because I will be painting this very, very soon. Uh, but that's all for me, guys. So definitely thank you for watching. Uh, please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And be sure to catch me in the next review, pose video, or anything else in between. But I'll be seeing you guys later in the next video. Bye-bye. Hmm, desktop army. Looks like a little cool figure to have on the desk. Why are you giving me that face?